Question 12. We're given the formula for pressure and force in area as pressure equals force over area. We're told that the box in the shape of a cuboid is going to be placed on a table and we know that only one of those faces will be in contact with the table. So that is however we position the cuboid, the base of it is the only part that's going to be in contact with the table. Um, we are told that the force exerted by the box on the table is always 105 newtons, so we know that our force is 105 newtons no matter what. We are given the dimensions of our box as being 5 by 4 by 3, so I could just write down here length is 5, width is 4, and height is 3, but technically I could have used any other letters in order to distinguish that, because depending on how you position this box on the table, you will end up with different amounts of pressure. And the way this works is that the bigger the area you have exerting a force, the less pressure there will be, and the smaller the area ends up being, the bigger the pressure will be. So what we're looking for here is there are three ways that we can position the box on the table. Two of those ways we're interested in, the one that gives the smallest area on the bottom and the one that gives the biggest area on the bottom. Now, in order to do this, we need to think about the fact that the bottom of this cuboid is a rectangle. And using these dimensions, we're going to try and get the biggest rectangle, the biggest area of a rectangle, and the smallest area of the rectangle. Hopefully, given the fact that we know that base times height is our formula for the area, that multiplying the two biggest numbers together are going to give us the greatest area. So 5 times 4 for 20 centimeter, no, meters squared. That is our greatest area. So A is 20 will be what we will use there. And if we use 3 times 4 for the area, we will get the smallest, which is 12 cubic meters. So the least area is 12. And of course, let's just say you weren't sure and you just tried the other one anyway. If we did 5 times 3, we're going to get 15. And 15, of course, is not the greatest and not the least. So I won't bother writing it down. So, like I mentioned before, when you have a smaller area, you're going to have the bigger pressure. And when you have a bigger area, you're going to have a smaller pressure. But you don't need to take my word for it because we're going to actually figure out what these values are for P and Q. And you'll be able to see for yourself that this, this value gives us the biggest pressure and this value gives us the smallest pressure. So we take our force of 105 newtons, which we were given, and we divide it by these areas. So 105 divided by 12 is going to give us the pressure when we're using the least area and the 105 divided by 20 is going to give us the pressure when we use the greatest area. It is important for me to, instead of using P for both of these, now make note of the values that the question give us. So when we're dealing with the greatest pressure, which my color coding's a little off here, let me change this to a green. When we're looking at the greatest pressure, that value is going to be P. So greatest pressure comes from least area, which means this value of P I will leave unchanged. The other one for the greatest area, we will get the least pressure, meaning that all of this will be here, which means that's not going to be a P, that's going to be a Q. So I'm just going to change that now to a Q. Now we can figure out the values of P and Q by um, doing the, the necessary divisions. Um, our P will be 105 take away, I'm sorry, 105 divided by 12, which is going to give us 8.75. And our value of Q is 105 divided by 20, which is 5.25. The question then asks us to work out the value of these, these taken away, P take away Q. So 8.75 Takeaway 5.25, which gives us 3.5, is our actual answer. Done.